Hi, my name is Tarık Kürt. I will talk about git based command, explain its usage, and demonstrate its features in this video. I assume you are familiar with Git concepts. First, I will talk about differences between rebase and merge. Then, I will show like examples of rebase, both basic and advanced ones. After talking about some drawbacks, I will make the final with explaining how to use rebase for a clean repository. Let's continue with basic structure of git commits and differences of rebase and merge commands. A git repository consists of commits. Every commit has a revision number. It's very long, so first six characters are usually enough. Revision number is like a hash. Git compares revision numbers to check if two commits are the same commit or not. Let's say we have two commits in master branch, A and B. And we have a feature branch with commit C. We implement new features in new branches. This is called feature branching. While I am working on feature branch, a new commit is pushed to master, commit D. Before continuing to develop my feature, I need commit D in my branch. There are two ways to integrate commit D into my branch, merge and rebase. In the end, these two commands' purpose is the same, integrating chains from one branch into another, but their usages are quite different. Let's start with merge. If the feature branch is ahead of master, which means all commits in master branch are also in feature branch, and there are extra commits in feature branch, there is no extra effort while merging the feature branch, and all commits are just transferred to master. But if feature branch is behind master, a merge commit is created to accomplish the merge. In this example, first master branch is merged into feature branch, and then the feature branch is merged into master. These two merges causes extra two merge commits. If you have multiple people working on multiple branches, things get a lot messier. One level diverging is fine, but three or more levels make a repository hard to maintain. This screenshot shows history of a four years old repository. It's almost impossible to understand what's going on here. Git is a very powerful tool. What we see here is an abuse of Git. Please don't do this for the health of feature developers. Let's look at how rebase works. In this state, we will rebase the feature branch onto master. When rebase starts, it finds commits that exist in feature branch but not in master branch which is only C. After that, C's link to B as a parent commit is broken. Like this. Now, these different commits will be applied on top of commit D, as if they are nearly committed, but they will stay in feature branch no matter what. The rebase will not affect master branch. Now, C's parent becomes commit D. There is another and important difference than previous state. Commit C's revision number has changed. I will show impacts of this change in demo. After we merge feature branch into a master, the merge happens in fast forward mode. There is no merge commit. So we have learned basic differences of rebase and merge commands, and now I will demonstrate them in a sample repository. Okay, let's start the demo. Now I have prepared this sample repository and these are the tools I'm going to use. First one is tick. It shows the repository's history like this. And I have prepared a script to show differences between branches. Its shortcut is gdf. It's used like this. It takes two branch names as parameters and show the difference between these branches. Now, we have five branches, five feature branches. To show how rebase can be used, these are feature A, B, C, D, and E. Feature A is a local branch, it's not pushed to origin. Other branches have their origin remote counterpart, and we will apply rebase on all of them one by one. Let's start with feature A. Let me show you the difference between feature A and master. Now, feature A has diverged from master, it has a feature A commit. 
and in master there is an add new file txt commit that doesn't exist in feature a now we want to integrate this commit to our branch feature a let's start with simple merge i will merge master into feature a branch now i won't change the commit message let's see the difference between feature a and master branch feature a branch is ahead of master now there is a merge commit here as you can see and feature a commits and the explanation for feature a commits hash was this one and it didn't change because the merge doesn't change commits in the history of branch now as you can see there's a merge commit here and when we look at the history you see this one level branching is created because of the merge commit here this merge commit caused a one level branching here. Okay. Now I will undo the merge commit. Okay. Let's see the difference between master and feature A again. We are in the previous situation. Feature A and master has diverged. Now I will rebase feature A onto master. Okay, let's see the difference between feature A and master again. Now, feature A is again ahead of master. There is only one commit difference between feature A and master. And hash of this feature A commit was BCDA, and now it has changed because rebase changed commit hashes. So, when we go to master and merge our feature A branch, Let's see what happened on our master branch. There is a new commit and explanation for feature A. You see, this commit is the same here. Okay. Rebasing local branches are easy. It doesn't have a remote counterpart. Let's see how feature B can be rebased onto master. Let me show you first the difference between master and feature B. Now, master has these commits ahead of feature B and the file commit and feature A commit and feature B has this commit on me. Okay. I will run git rebase again to rebase feature B onto master. Now let's see the difference between master and feature B. Only difference is this commit. Its revision number also changed as you can see the difference here. Okay, let's see what happens when we git push. All right, updates were rejected because the tip of our feature B branch is behind its remote counterpart, origin feature B. Let's see the difference between feature B and origin feature B. Now, our local feature B has these commits ahead of origin feature B. They have come from master. Also, it indicates these commits are not the same because their revision numbers are not the same. It compares revision numbers to check if commits are the same or not. Now, because we rebased our branch, its commit hash has changed, and now Git sees that the local feature B is behind of origin feature B. How can we fix this? Okay, Git says run Git pull first. If we do, it will try to merge this commit into these commits. But this commit and this commit are the same actually, only their revision numbers are different. You don't want to pull it. If you do that, there will be two commits with the same commit message, and there's gonna be merge conflict because this commit will conflict with this commit. They are changing the same files. We don't want two commits with the same message in our history. So when you rebase your branch like this, you need to do git push by force. When you run this command, your local history will be overwritten onto the origin feature B branch. Now, origin feature B will be replaced with feature B, your local feature B. Well, this is not a safe command. If you are working with a colleague, it can be quite problematic. Your colleague may have pushed origin feature B before and you may overwrite it. So there is a safer version, force with lease. While pushing with force with lease, it also sends the last update time of its local info of origin feature B. 
If remote repository's update time is greater than local repository's update time, push force is rejected. This is not a very safe command, but safer than push force command. Okay, I'm gonna run this now. Well, let's see the difference between feature B and origin feature B again. There is none. Cool. Now I'm gonna check out master and merge my feature B branch here. Let's see what changed in our master branch. Feature A commits here and feature B commits here. There are no merge commits. Nice. Let's continue with feature C. I have prepared feature C to conflict with feature B. Let me show you how it will occur with the difference. Now you see this commit here. The change in this commit will conflict the change in this commit. They both modify readme file. Let's run rebase onto master for feature C. Okay. It paused at this conflicting commit. Now we need to do resolve the conflict and then you are gonna run git rebase continue here. There are lots of tools to resolve conflicts in a graphical user interface. I'm gonna do it just with Vim because it's so easy in this case. Let me remove this. Okay, these lines are gonna go. Alright, this is the result version. Now let's see the status. We need to do git add. You see here, we need to do git add to mark resolution. And the conflict has resolved. I am going to run git rebase continue. Okay, let's see the difference between feature C and origin feature C. Okay, our local feature C has these commits ahead of origin feature C, and origin feature C has these commits add feature C to read me because the revision numbers are different and now we will fix this by force with push force with lace now they are the same and I will go to master and merge feature C let's see the difference between origin master and master okay feature B is here feature A is here feature C is here nice now let's go to feature D and see the difference between feature D and master. Okay, different from master, feature D has these two commits. Let's rebase this branch onto master now because it's behind of master, it should be ahead. Okay. Let's see the difference between feature D and master again. All right, feature D is not behind of master anymore. Now I will push by force with this and check out master again and merge feature D. Let's see what happened. It's in fast forward mode. That means feature D was not behind of master and a merge commit was not required. Let's see the difference between our local master and origin master now. These two commits are added to master separately. Now let's assume we want to revert feature D. You can revert commits with this revert command and what you need to do is give a revision number to here. Git will revert this commit in another commit. When you apply revert to feature A, B, or C, there's gonna be only one commit. But if you want to do this to feature D, you have to revert these both commits. Let's see how that happens. Let's revert the second commit also. And so the difference between our local master and origin master. There are two feature D commits, 
and two revert commits of feature D. Okay, our branch only had two commits, so there are only two revert commits. But you have more than two commits, you have to revert all of them. It's not nice in your Git history. Okay, we are gonna apply another technique while merging our feature D branch. Let me just reset our situation before merge. Okay, now feature A, B and C merged. Now we are gonna merge feature D, but before that, you are gonna give an option no FF. This option prevents fast forward mode and creates a merge commit while merging this branch. Let's see what happens. It creates a merge commit and this is the merge commit message. Let's see the difference of local master and origin master again. Sorry. Now, there is a merge commit for feature D. I have said that we don't like merge commits, but in this case we do. Because if you want to revert this feature D, what we need to do is only revert these merge commits. And reverting merge commits requires an option. It asks which parent should I go. If you give one, it's gonna revert this commit until this commit. If you give two, it reverts this until this. I have run git revert and it says git reverts this reverts commit this reversing change made to this. As you remember that reversing change to this commit was this revision number. Now let's see our local history again. One revert commit and one merge commit here. Okay, I will reset the situation for revert again. Now let's go to feature E. We will rebase this branch onto master again. Feature E has these commits. There are five commits, they are not well prepared. Well, there is an experimental commit which shouldn't be in the feature A at all. And this commit's message is too long. This commit is a fix for previous commit. It should be applied in the previous commit actually. I'm going to use interactive mode to use Rebase's advanced features. Okay, this is the interactive editor. There are commands like this these commands. By default all of them are pick and these are revision numbers of commits. These commit messages are for us humans. If you edit this commit message here it will not change at the end of the rebase. Okay let's see which commands we have. We have pick. It uses the commit. If you don't Use the interactive mode, all commits are picked by default. There's revert. It uses the commit but edits the commit message. Well, as you remember, I said I don't like this commit's message and I will edit it. Sorry, I will reword it. Okay, edit uses the commit but stops for amending. Now, I want to edit this commit. I figured that I want to change something in this commit. There's squash, use commit, but mal into previous commit. All right, as you remember, I said this commit should not be here. It should be merged with the previous commit. Now, I will say squash here. And at the end of the rebase, this commit will be mended into this commit. Fix up is the same, but it discards commit's log message. It's same with squash, but squash asks you a commit message for these two commits. And fix up just assigns a commit message itself. Here I'm going to use squash, not fix up, because I want to show how squash happens. There's an experimental commit here. You don't want this experimental commit in our feature at all. It shouldn't be merged to master. If we delete this line, 
this commit will disappear. Well, it will not be in future E branch, it will not be merged to master. The order here matters. So if you move this line here, this commit will be applied before this commit. It will change the history. But I will remove this commit and it will disappear from its history. Well, it won't just disappear, but in a garbage collection, it will be deleted. Okay, now we are finished. In the beginning, there were five commits, and now I expect there will be three commits in the end. We are exiting Wim here. All right. The first command was pick. It picked this commit, and now it's trying to squash these two commits. And git asks me a commit message for these two commits. Let's say something like this for now. Now, squash is successful. There were an edit for this add feature E commit. Git stopped at this commit and asks me to complete my edits. Then I will run this commit amend and then once I am satisfied, I will run git rebase continue. Let's add something to this new file. I have made the change and now I'm going to edit to staged area. And I will run git commit and commit message stays the same. As you can see, this change, new file txt is new. All right, now we are done. I will run git rebase continue now. Okay, now we are rewarding, which means we are changing the message of this commit. Well, this commit message does not comply with best practices. So I'm going to limit the first line with 50 characters. Modify features txt for, for feature e. This is the commit message. Okay, the first line is 50 characters. Now we are going to leave an empty line here. And again, we are going to limit here with 50 characters. Now it looks nice. Okay, successfully rebased. Let's see the difference between our feature E and origin feature E. They are a lot different. These commits are from master and these commits are a result of the interactive rebase. Previously, there were these commits and now there are these commits. It looks much better. Now I will check out master and merge feature E, but with no FF mod. Merge commit for feature E. And now let's see the final history of our local master. Okay, there is only one level branching here. There are minimum merge commits and a features commits are grouped together under a merge commit, which makes it easily revertible. Rebase is a powerful tool, but not a silver bullet. Let's see some drawbacks. If your rebased branch has a remote tracking branch, you need to push by force. You can accidentally lose some commits if you are not careful. Especially if multiple people are working on the same branch. In that case, you should communicate with other people before rebasing. If you happen to fall into this case, you can check the explanation in gitscm.com. Most feature branches are based on master, but sometimes you may have to base your branch on another feature branch. It's very hard and cumbersome to develop with rebase in this case. Rebase forces you to not base your branches on other feature branches. I think that's a good restriction. You can check gitscm.com again to handle such case. I showed how to handle conflicts in demo. After rebase finishes successfully, you have to solve same conflicts again and again each time you rebase your branch. There is a fix for this problem, enabling reuse recorded solution with this configuration. 
After enabling, Git records the conflict resolutions and repeats them automatically for each rebase. Rebase is a complex feature, so what's the gain? Why should we use Rebase? Git commits and Git history are very similar to writing code. Martin Fowler said, any fool can write code that a computer can understand. Good programmers write code that humans can understand. I think the same principle is valid for Git commits. It keeps a history of our code base, and we need to keep it clean. We should think about feature developers. Our code repository is like our home. The cleaner, the better. Rebase allows us to polish the commits. There are links to good blog posts about git commit message best practices. We can scratch commits, edit them, even remove them if required. So, there won't be any unnecessary commits or bad commits in the history. Getting rid of unnecessary branching in the history makes tracking chains easier. Then, everybody can understand what exactly happened, in what order chains are introduced to the repository. You can find links related to the subject in the video description. You can give me feedback, ask questions from my Twitter account. Thanks for watching.